Okay, thanks, honey. Hi, welcome to Victoria Knits. I'm Victoria. And yes, there's been lots of snowman being made and lots of fun in the snow with Russell. Today is January 24th, and Kim and I are not in our backyard today. We got up this morning and we took the train out of Whitefish to Essex, Montana, uh, and the Isaac Walton Inn. Uh, believe it or not, neither Kim or I had ever been on an Amtrak train. And here's a little video, some video I took while we were on there. It was a lot of fun. So Kim and I are out snowshoeing. He packed up our snowshoes with him in a backpack up here. And uh, we snowshoed from the inn up here. We were looking for some really pretty country, but so far, <laughs> it's, it's pretty. It's pretty, don't get me wrong, it is pretty. But I was really looking for some majestic mountains and so far we have not seen that. But it's been really lovely. So I wanted to talk about my Christmas flax light sweater which I finished. Um, the uh, top, the top uh, colorway is by Leading Men Fiber Arts. I'll meet you by the mistletoe. The bottom colorway is Jingle Joy by Hannah Made It. Um, very lovely. And the, um, the green one I dyed and it was in episode 27 where I showed how I dyed that with some candy sprinkles. And you may remember if you've been watching this podcast that uh, the, the red and white, the burgundy and white stripe was the one I had the difficulty with. I wanted the body of it to match what happened on the uh, sleeves. And so I thought I was being really bright and I wound up the sleeve portion separate from the body. Wasn't the best idea. I'll show you how it turned out. I had to use some leftover yarn that I dyed for the body for one of the sleeves, and I'm really glad I did, because it actually turned out just right. There's like maybe one extra row of burgundy on there, but there's nothing wrong with that. I should have left well enough alone, is what I'm trying to say, and gone with uh, what I had dyed up for the body, and it all would have worked out fine. But I still really like my sweater, and I'll, I look forward to wearing it at Christmas time. So Kim and I are going to continue on uh, with our, our snowshoeing. We've been out about 45 minutes maybe. Um, so we're going to keep going. And if we see something um, super pretty, although this, you know, you got to admit it's, it's quite pretty. <laughs> we'll stop and shoot some more video.
So we finished our first snowshoe excursion. We might take another one later. Uh, the Isaac Walton Inn is behind me. Now I'll tell you a little bit about it. It was built in 1939, and uh, the hotel was named in honor of Sir Isaac Walton, the English author of The Complete Angler. He died in 1683. The, this hotel was built to meet the needs of the railroad personnel at the time, but it was also designed to be a resort at what was supposed to be the new entrance to Glacier National Park, but that never happened. The park entrances are at the East and West Glacier, and this hotel is just on the outskirts of the park to the Southeast. This hotel was built at a cost of just $40,000 with 29 rooms, 10 bathrooms, a spacious lobby, dining room, kitchen, and a two-ton cook stove, drying room, storeroom, and general store. And I will insert some video of the inside. It's very pretty in there, and they really keep with the railroad motif. It took 12 carpenters three months to complete this. Much of the interior and exterior of the hotel remains the same today. The hotel stands alongside a rail yard that was, and still is, critical to railroad operations. Railroad workers toiled on snow removal gangs and locomotive helper engine operations. Helper engines were added to help eastbound trains make it over the Continental Divide at Mariah's Pass, with its peak elevation at just over 5,000 feet. And helper engines were taken off westbound trains after they came down the pass. So if you want to stay at this hotel, there are rooms inside the inn, but they also have um, cabooses and train cars that have been converted into uh, hotel rooms and they're really lovely inside. It's, it's, a, it's a unique hotel and I, it's, it's always fun to visit it. And Glacier Park is basically right across the highway from us. And here comes a train, so let's watch that go by. So did I just say we were on our way back to the hotel because yeah we were <laughs> and then I saw this pretty view and I thought well I could do a little more podcasting here this is uh, behind me that's one of the railroad cars you can rent um, Kim and I and Britt when we were here last summer took a little uh, tour through a couple of them and they are really really unique and attractive inside and, you know, I have an excuse for feeling tired after our long snowshoe hike because on, Jan on a December 30th, I fell down and uh, twisted my knee. I think I probably sprained it. Now, here's a little test to see how old you are. Do you remember the um, TV Western? It's called Gunsmoke. <laughs> and do you remember the character in it? who limped yeah well a weaver um, chose that limp for his character and he later regretted it because he had, it meant he had to limp through every episode and I've been limping around the house like that it's been about three weeks it's getting better it's still not completely healed but uh, I am able to get out on it obviously but I thought it was really interesting when I looked up stuff about gun smoke I didn't realize that the series ran for 20 seasons from 1955 to 1975, 635 episodes. Now my parents brought me up on TV Westerns. We watched Gunsmoke, The Virginian, The Rifleman, Bonanza, and any movie that had John Wayne in it, of course. That was just what, you know, just what we did back then. But these are some things I did not know about Gunsmoke. Some actors who made an appearance on the show include Harrison Ford, DeForest Kelly, William Shatner, James Doohan, Scotty from Star Trek, 
Leonard Nimoy. Also on the show were Jodie Foster, Betty Davis, John Voigt, Dennis Hopper, Dan Blocker from Bonanza, and three of the six Brady Bunch kids, Cindy, Jan, and Peter. And if you've never seen an episode of Gunsmoke, I... Oh, there's a train going by. I don't recommend you watch it, but I, I will link below in case you're interested. Yes? Yes. Okay. So, you know, if you're a knitter and you go on a trip, you have to bring something with you to knit on, right? I brought two things. One of them is my Knit Season Scarf. I'll put the uh, author's name at the bottom and the yarn I'm using. Now, I have made some progress on this, as you can see. I don't know why I haven't woven in these, these two ends here, because I really need to. That's silly to have them get tangled up in my yarn. What I really want you to pay attention to is the pretty sheep at the last panel up here. And you know why I want you to look at those? Because I didn't make a mistake on that rectangle. <laughs> oh, crap. All the rest of them, I <laughs> pretty much have uh, some glaring mistakes. There's one right there. Now, maybe I'll go back and fix that. Um, I'm not gonna go back. But, you know, I could duplicate stitch it, prob probably. I'm thinking I might do that. Um, I do like the way this is turning out. And I'm trying to be more careful with my, my um, knitting on it. But it is a challenge. It is a challenge. It doesn't take much to make a little mistake, you know, every once in a while. Here's, uh, let's see, where did I see another one? You know, why am I pointing out my mistakes to you? You don't care, right? It's my scarf. But I brought this up. I brought this up to work on. Oh, and I also want to talk about on uh, Page the Framers podcast and on Elizabeth's Just One N podcast. They both talk about this new app. And I, it wasn't until Page the Framer said it changed her life that I decided that I better get on board with that and at least take a look at it. It's called Knit, Knit Companion, I believe the name of it but I'm going to show you a little bit of it on here. And it really has helped me. I used to keep track of where I was at on this thing, kind of in a primitive kind of method. And I really like that app and I like using um, the iPad with it. And it, it's, it's been kind of a lifesaver with this, with this pattern. And I will show you uh, some of the things you can do with it with graphs, but the graph I'm showing you is free. I would not show you the, the you know, the graph for this scarf because it's a paid pattern. So, yeah, if you have an iPad or something like that that works nicely for you that you can sit in front of you and knit, I would recommend getting that, that app. Uh, I only got the free version, but it seems to be plenty for me and it seems to be working out okay. Knitting on this scarf and doing this du double knitting technique, to me, is kind of like meditation. I find myself uh, sometimes losing focus, like you do when you meditate sometimes, and I have to bring my, my mind back to what, you know, what I'm doing. But that little vertical line you can move back and forth really keeps me on track, and I can double check where I am, and this is getting a little easier. So I'm happy about that. And now I think Kim and I are actually going to go have lunch. <laughs> this is the downstairs portion of the inn where they have a nice little bar. Kim and I actually went down there and we ate the sandwiches that we had brought for lunch. And then later we ordered some food and had some couple of drinks. It was all really delicious. So Kim and I walked out from the inn a little bit so I could try to finish up my podcast. That is the middle fork of the Flathead River behind me. And I have been working on a pair of socks. This, this, is, the, this is the Scatterby Socks by Amy Stringer. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And it's really pretty. I'll show you a little bit of a close-up, see if I can show you some of that pattern. 
I like it. The yarn is Cascade Heritage Prints, number 20, Lightning. Okay. And um, you remember when I told you that uh, I had brought two knitting projects to work on? This was uh, number two. It's a sock I'm making for Kim. Okay. Um, the yarn is 80% acrylic and 20% alpaca. I think it's going to be really really nice and soft. It says it's a worsted weight, but it feels more like a DK to me. And I'm just doing a simple two by two. Okay, we lost audio here. I'm trying to tell you that I'm doing a simple two by two rib on size three needles. And I'm just doing it toe up. On as I would need to do that. But you know what? I haven't been able to work on these since I've been up here. When we got here, um, we got here around nine o'clock. We had breakfast. We left and went for our two and a half hour uh, snowshoeing hike. And then we got back and ate some sandwiches and we've been relaxing a little bit. I thought we would have so much time to work on stuff. <laughs> it hasn't happened. I was so worried we'd be so bored when we were here. That hasn't happened. So, okay. So since I sprained my knee or whatever the heck I did to it, I have been doing a lot of sitting and knitting and watching TV. And I've been watching, uh, I've always talked about Agatha Raisin. Well, she's got season two on right now. And you know, one of my favorite things about all these British mystery shows is not that, not only because, you know, it's British and it's mystery, mystery murder stuff, but the, the scenic, the scenery is just so beautiful to watch, right? I've also been watching uh, Loch Ness. That was an excellent show. I've been watching um, Mystery Road, which is based in Australia. Okay. I've been watching um, Love, Lies, and Records, and that's with Ashley Jensen, who stars in the Agatha Raisin series. I've been watching Winter on Acorn TV. And another fun one is Mr. and Mrs. Murder on Acorn TV. Okay, so my question to you is, are you a murder mystery fan? And if you are, I'd like you to leave a comment because I'm doing a giveaway. Um, there's a British murder mystery yarn uh, coming out every month from Teal Torch Knits. That's uh, Christina in Portland, Oregon. And the January yarn was based on Death in Paradise. The next one is going to be based on, uh, the next one is going to be based on um, the Miss Fisher series, which is a great one too. So to enter, just be a subscriber and leave a comment. Tell me your favorite mystery show. Um, if you don't like mystery shows, you can also comment on that. I don't know what the yarn is going to look like. I won't open it up before I send it to you. I think this will be really fun. And I also started um, the Vortex Cardigan. That's by Louise Robert. I, you know how sometimes these pattern creators will put out a pattern for free? Well, I set my iPod with the, uh, what I thought was the correct day to get that pattern for free. It's a $7 pattern. You think I got it for free? No, I messed up the day. I bought it on the wrong day. Hi. Two things. One, we're home. Uh, today is January 25th. And I also have a cold. So that's probably part of why I was feeling so exhausted yesterday and I apologize for any stuffiness you might hear during this podcast. It's just kind of the way it is and I wanted to get this podcast wrapped up. I ran my iPad out of battery yesterday and so Kim and I had to um, give up on the idea of getting the podcast finished yesterday. So that's, that's what happened there. I was talking about my Vortex Cardigan by Louise Robert. I got started on it and I decided instead of using DK weight, which I did not have, but I have a lot of pretty fingering, that I would double the fingering and I figured that would work. I, th I think I miscalculated the amount I would need in yardage. Yeah, I don't know, math, right? Uh, so I have 
some skeins of gray coming from knit picks because you can't get any more of that uh, knit crates uru yarn speckled singles in the colorway silence i don't seem to find that so i needed some gray to make up for that i started it off with um hannah made its girl crush colorway and then i moved on to the silence from knit crate and then into hugh loco's wild at heart but um, the whole thing is on hold for a while. It's very different construction. You start out, uh, I can't remember which point, but you start out uh, with the button band. It's, there won't be any buttons, but if there were buttons, that would be the button band, and that's what you start out in. And um, you connect it, and so you're uh, knitting in the round eventually. So you're going round and round the button band, and uh, you end up at the back. And I think you kitchen it together and then you pick up the sleeves and finish it. So yeah, it's going to be different and it's going to be interesting. I am glad I bought it. <laughs> I mean, you know, these pattern, pattern writers need to be paid for their patterns too. I get that. So, you know, I can't feel too bad about that, right? So I know this podcast seems like it's all about me, but it doesn't necessarily have to be, right? And uh, FYI, I decided to uh, turn around and give you a different view of some of the trees on our property. Um, so I was kind of looking around and I thought, why not start a new segment? We could call it Viewer's Corner, or we could call it Cool Stuff Made by Other People, or we could call it It Isn't All About Me. <laughs> But I, I thought, how about from my viewers, and thanks for sharing. And so the first one that um, agreed to share is uh, a viewer of mine called uh, Sandra. She lives in Washington State. She is a crocheter. And I asked her to describe her crafting journey to me, and she, this is what she sent to me. Thanks for asking me to tell about my yarny journey. For the past 10 years, I have been the club leader of my daughter's campfire club. In the spring of 2017, we were all voting on what community service project to do with the club, and we had many choices like work at a food bank, clean beaches and parks, clean our school, etc. And my co-leader told everyone about the National Red Cross project called Red Heart Cares Crochet Blanket. It's a simple single crochet pattern that when completed would be donated to the local Red Cross. And of course I will be inserting pictures. Our kids, including one boy, liked that idea and we brought in a teacher to teach us all how to crochet. I had never crocheted in my life and I found it hard at first. I've included our group photo with our pride and joy blanket we made and donated to the Seattle Red Cross in June 2017. I had fun learning crochet and was tired of the mess of my other hobby, which was scrapbooking. I went on YouTube and taught myself a bunch of other stitches and was off. I kept trying things slightly harder than where I was at just to see if I could do it. Pretty soon I learned to read patterns by following along with videos that had printed patterns as well. This year I entered seven items in the Evergreen State Fair in Monroe, Washington and received seven blue ribbons and two special presentation awards. I was pretty excited, even though I found out that I was being judged in the American judging system, where your piece is judged against the standard of the item and not against each other. So basically everyone got ribbons, oh well. The pieces I am most proud of are the blankets that I learned new techniques in construction and my latest project. I included a photo of my Ross Pole Dark blanket. Persian Tiles blanket. And the beaded elephant head. Can you believe that elephant head? Isn't that gorgeous. I've had so much fun making all the challenging crochet projects and now I think I'm ready for knitting. 
I think crochet is great for blankets because of how fast they can come together, but I want to learn Norwegian color work patterns and fine patterned shawls. I just love Norwegian mittens and the Selbu rose. That's where I am right now. Thanks for the interest. And Sandra is Misty Tat on Ravelry. And I went and looked at her project page and I suggest you do too. Her mosaic blanket is beautiful. Her office wall mandala is gorgeous, as is her dragonfly baby blanket. And, you know, I really appreciate her allowing me to share on my podcast. Thank you, Sandra, so much. I just love seeing what other people do because, you know, I do a lot of the same types of things. And I, you know, maybe that's okay and maybe it's not. But it's fun to see other people's things. So if anybody would like to volunteer something for my next podcast, that would be great. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be super wonderful. It can be just super wonderful that you did it. You can email me at vjwilliams at gmail.com or contact me on Ravelry. On Ravelry, I am Victoria Jean. On Instagram, I am Victoria Jean W. And as usual, podcast notes will be linked under this YouTube video and also on my Ravelry group, Victoria Knits. But thank you so much, Sandra, for sharing. That's just great. I love that elephant head. On my last podcast, as I mentioned, um, I, it was Christmas Day and I was getting a little tired and um, the editing didn't go as well as it should have. I wanted to give you a close-up of the pin I bought from Allie at Little Drops of Wonderful, and here it is. So it, I hope it brings a smile to your face because I think it's super cute and I really, really like it. Also, Linda of the uh, Joey Scarf podcast, she showed some little buttons she bought from an Etsy place called Reed's Engravables, and I will have all the links in the show notes. And I'll show you um, what she bought, what she ordered. So you can custom order these. She did a really cute, really cute little saying on hers. Um, I did not, I did not go with something quite as cute. <laughs> Here's what I went with. And hopefully the camera focused on that. If it didn't, I will uh, insert it. But you get, um, let's see, I got 25 wooden tags for $15.95. That's not bad, right? I think those are really cute. And they'll make a, a really cute addition to my, to my gifted knitting things. So it is the new year. And I was just wondering if anybody has plans. Um, I don't, I don't make resolutions. A lot of people have been talking about making resolutions or um, goals or whatever. Uh, I don't do that so much. I feel like I, I just want to see what, what attracts me through the year. Some people are limiting their yarn purchases because they have so much stash and they really want to knit from their stash. My stash is not that big. Um, and I was along those lines, I was wondering if anybody has watched the show Tidying Up. It's on Netflix, and we watched the first episode the other day, and my daughter and I were pretty inspired by it, so I decided to tidy up my, my yarn stash, and it was nice. It felt good. I'm still, I'm not quite finished with it. Um, here is a partial picture of what I've done so far. Some of it is going to end up in my bedroom because my knitting room has turned into a playroom for the grandsons, and that's just fine. But it's nice to have that playroom feel a little less claustrophobic for them. And I, I like the show tidying up. She had, some, she had some nice suggestions. I wasn't sure I was going to like it, but, um, you know, sometimes you kind of resist that kind of thing. I think, okay, I do. Sometimes I resist that kind of thing as I get a little older. Uh, sometimes I tend to think, well, you know, I've been around the block a few times. I know stuff. But it's really good to be open to new things right and so it was it was nice to watch that show and she has she has some great ideas another uh new podcast to me was called uh the knitters the knitters league podcast there's four women in that and i i jo i enjoyed their the episode i watched and i'll probably watch more i thought that was kind of fun so it wouldn't hurt to check them out 
Also, uh, Patty at Four Boys and an NL Girl is doing a lot of floss tube videos where if you're a fan of, um, what is it? I don't think it's needlepoint, cross stitch mostly. I think she calls it cross stitch, but you can check out her floss tube episodes. They're pretty interesting. She has one where you can stitch along with her, where she sits and stitches and then she just kind of talks to you like you're in the same room. That's pretty cool. I was hoping for some sunshine today, but that's obviously not going to happen. <laughs> the weather just doesn't cooperate with me, does it? So, let's see, checking my notes. Um, I, made, I made my youngest grandson, Nico, a new baby vertebrae sweater. I'll show you uh, his, the first one I made, the blue one, and then I made him another one. And I, th <laughs> I thought it was finished. And I gave it to my daughter and son-in-law and I, you know, wove in all the ends and she was like, I don't think that's quite done, Mom. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's finished. It's all finished. I tell you, it's all finished. And then I uh, looked at the old one and I was like, yeah, uh, I didn't put the button band on it. <laughs> it doesn't have buttons, but again, I, d I hadn't added the button band. So I added that back in. It looks much better. It is made out of... Um, some yarn that was given to me, uh, the brown yarn, I have no idea, but the colored yarn was called Klansman Sport Yarn in the colorway Huntley. And take a look at this label. I found that really fascinating. This, this yarn has been uh, discontinued, so I don't think you can buy it anymore. But I thought, I thought that label was just really something to look at. Look at the price on that. <laughs> and one of the things my daughter and son-in-law like about the uh, baby vertebrae, you know, our house is not, not as warm in every area as it could be. Um, where they sleep and where the boys sleep is, is nice, and, nice and warm. But upstairs, sometimes it can get a little chilly. Anyway, the baby vertebrae is really nice. It helps keep them warm. It, ha it covers their back, as you can see. But what it really does for Nico is it gives an extra layer of thickness that he can't scratch his eczema through on, on his arm. He's, um, he wears a hat most of the time because uh, that baby is covered with eczema. He, uh, gosh, I think it broke out in it a, a couple months old. And I convinced my daughter to take him to a regular GP to have that looked at because I couldn't believe he had that widespread of eczema. Russell, his older brother, has also suffered from eczema. Neither side of our family does, so we don't know where, you know, we have no idea where it came from. But Russell mostly has it on his, uh, you know, behind his knees and on his elbows and a few places now. Um, he, but Nico had it really badly, so my daughter took him to the GP and he basically said, well, you know, here's a steroid cream you can put on him, but I wouldn't put it on much of him because it's steroid and you don't want to cover him in it. And he said, um, there's no cure for eczema, so maybe he'll outgrow it. And that, you know, and he said, you can try some different formulas. She was, um, she was giving him, uh, she breastfeeds, but she was also giving him some formula to fill him up. And so we were trying different types and, you know, my point is, I didn't think he was as useful as he could have been. So she's been taking him to a naturopath. And that doctor has been treating both boys with some different things. And Russell is getting more under control. It's a, it's a funny little, the eczema is a strange little thing. This doctor treats it as far, um, according to the boy's personality traits. I had never thought of that. But she also suggested trying different foods. Um, Nico is now uh, eating baby food, so she said keep him off of um, dairy and wheat or gluten. And then she said change to all cotton clothing. Uh, start making your own laundry soap, which we have done. And uh, Vanessa made lotion for the boys the other day, and she used um, my aloe vera plants. So she put fresh aloe vera from inside those stems into the lotion. And I'll show you some pictures of, of um, how severe it is. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's better and then sometimes it gets bad, but there's still, you know, it, com it comes and goes, is what I'm trying to say. And they're still, they're still working through it. The, 
One of the biggest problems is it keeps him awake at night. He wakes up itching, scratching, and scratching his head. So now they put him to bed with a hat on. Um, but you can imagine trying to fall asleep when your whole body itches. It's pretty tough on a baby. And it was really tough on them for quite a while trying to get some sleep through that. He would wake up about every hour and a half. So it's gotten better, but you know, it's still there and it's, uh, we're still dealing with that. If you have any, any eczema stories or suggestions, shoot them into those comments. We'll definitely read those. So I finished that pair of Christmas socks for my Christmas box. Um, it's called Winter's Frost is the name of the pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. The um, yarn is Reindeer Games by Hannah Made It. I didn't especially love doing the um, top-down socks. I like toe-up. But I decided to do them top down like the pattern called for with the heel and gusset or with the um, the uh, gusset and flap heel. I did not like that either. I like my fish lips kiss heel. So I am going back to that. But it was it was good practice, right? So those are done. And here are um, here are all the Christmas socks I have finished. The, the, these are the ones that I dyed myself, and I showed how I dyed them in episode 14. So if you're interested in that, you can go back and watch that. And I don't normally show uh, what most people call acquisitions in their podcasts, but I had a, um, I won some. For making those Christmas socks, my last pair of Christmas socks, the Winter's Frost, I um, won some yarn uh, because I entered them in a knit along at Love Sock Wool, and they sent me this beautiful, beautiful yarn. Isn't that pretty? And guess what I'm going to make out of that? That will be more Christmas socks. Surprise, surprise. It's really pretty. They also sent along a little tiny pair of scissors, which I should have brought out here with me, but they're the, the nice little travel scissors, and they're really cute, and they also have a Christmas pattern on them. Very nice. I really, really appreciated that. It was a, a huge surprise. And just to keep up with my uh, Christmas sock knitting, <laughs> I see Linda at Joey's Scarf is also doing that. And she'll probably beat me to the 25, because she... <laughs> She, she doesn't seem to get as distracted as I do. But anyway, um, I saw this was on sale. This is from Sarah Craft. She has an Etsy shop, and I'll link it below. And this is called Oh Christmas Tree. And it was on sale. I think I already said that. But I could not, I could not resist that. Isn't that pretty? That's going to knit up really nicely. I'm really looking forward to making socks out of that, too. Christmas socks, people. It's all about Christmas still. So I think this is going to wrap up my podcast. Don't forget to uh, leave a comment below or in the Ravelry group to win the uh, Mystery Murder yarn from Teal Torch Knits. 
Uh, you can also follow her on Instagram. She is Teal Torch Knits on Instagram. And so you can, you can go and see what the um, Death in Paradise skein looked like that she just finished for the January, the January one. And I think that'll be really fun. Also, the off the porch segment, um, Kim and I were given a trail camera for Christmas from my daughter and son-in-law. And so we've been putting that up in different places and getting a, getting a few uh, pics of deer and things. And then Kim realized that you could set it to video. And so we did that and that's been kind of fun. Uh, also some, some little snow crystal close-ups that Kim and I took. Uh, the ducks, they handled the snow. They handled the snow really well, unlike the chickens, which you can see all huddled up in the in the back there in the um, <laughs> in the shed. The chickens don't really like to come out. If it snows too much, they're kind of over it. But the ducks, the ducks will come on out and hang out and do whatever. And then Russell and his dad enjoying the snow quite a bit. So uh, goodbye from Montana. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. I know I'm, I've had some new subscribers lately and I really, really appreciate you. It's a lot of fun. My family hears all about it when I get a new subscriber. <laughs> they hear all about it when I lose one too. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging in there with me. I hope you enjoyed it. See you again. Ready, set, go! Yeah, I am. Are you fine? Fine! Whoa! You're done! Okay.
okay. What are you doing? I'm making some yard. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you slowed it down. It's going faster. No, it's going faster. Faster than it. Yay! Super.